back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement time-based caching in Angular. Caching is very important one that you can apply and prevent repeated calls that is required for your application to show some data. The, the data whichever is not changing so frequently, you should uh, try to apply this caching logic. I have a demo app to demonstrate this. This is my demo app. I will give you the source code completely, but if you look at this, I have accessing services like the cosine service, category service, and other services, which makes plenty of get API calls. So what we are going to do is we will create a caching service and intercept our, and then we'll implement this to avoid this repeated call. So what we need for this demo is we need only three things. We need a HTTP cache service. We need a HTTP interceptor. Without delaying, let's get into this demo. So here is my demo app. This is a simple restaurant app uh, built in Angular. So if you hover on the cosines, it will pull up the different cosine details by calling an API. You can see that in the right side developer tool, whenever I hover on each of these cosines, the calls are made. And these calls are repeated calls. So what we are going to do is, we're going to implement this caching and avoid this repeated calls. And we also will apply a set of timer, which will track down the timing. And once the timer is elapsed, it will reset the timer and it will also invalidate the cache. Now let's get into this and let's see how to implement. I have opened my demo app in Visual Studio Code and you can see this is the files. And in this app, I have several services like category service, cosine service, and other services. That is what you're seeing here. So under the service folder, I'm going to create a service called HTTP cat service. So this service will serve for us to retrieve and save the outgoing calls details. So if you see what I'm going to do is I'm going to write four methods. One is for get put, and there are two other methods, one to invalidate the particular URL and one is to invalidate the entire cache. So if you see the get method, we will accept the URL and the response. So we will store the URL and their respective response in a private variable called request, which is an array of object. Okay, a key value pair, I would say. So if you specifically pass a particular URL, it can return, it can return the response of the particular URL. Now put method is to save a particular URL and its response. So the other two methods are to invalidate the particular URL and invalidate a particular, or I would say invalidate the entire cache in this. So now we're done with the HTTP cache service. Next is to implement a uh, interceptor. The interceptor, what I'm going to create is the cache interceptor. See interceptor is nothing but it will intercept the outgoing calls the angler will watch for every single outgoing calls it would be get put post delete anything it will watch every single thing and we can actually manipulate the request or do some action based on the response so what we are going to do with this interceptor is we are going to see which call is going out if it is a get call then we are going to call the http cat service and see whether we have any save response already and if you don't have we're going to call the put method and save the response into the the private variable which is under the http gas service so that is what we're going to do and if the call is not get if let's say someone is saving updating deleting we, we should not cache all those things so we will just leave the call to the next interceptor in the pipeline and that's it we don't need to do anything now you can customize this um, by applying more logic onto the get. Uh, if you want to specifically capture a particular set of gets, just add a private variable with a list of URLs and predict whether the URL is what is going out and then the if condition will satisfy and it will save only those kind of responses. Right, so you can keep adding to your customized logic over there. To see this in action, I'm going to uncomment all the console logs in the if conditions and the else conditions. So you will see when the request is getting cached and when the request is not getting cached. 
okay so let's see that in action so now we have everything so we have one more thing to do so once you have http interceptor you should go to your ng module and put that in the provider so under the provider of the ng module just add the http interceptor in provider and specify which interceptor class has to be used here if you had more interceptors those will be in the pipelines and each one will called one by one that's how the http interceptor works now let's see the demo so we are back to the demo after i save it i'm going to reload this page and i cleared all the console logs and networks logs so when i hover on these things you see there's a call going out this is a different cosine so another call went out however if i hover on thy cosine again see you did not see any call going out for both of these things right and then if you hover on other things there's still the calls are going out and even in the console you can see what is getting recorded so it clearly says which url and which response has been cached this is coming from the interceptor that we have with the console logs so this is how it behaves right so if i go back and come back to the menu so when i hover on different items let's say i'm going to a detail of a particular food item which is in this case samosa so the the image has been called from a different api and the data has been called from a different api so that's why they are all added in the cache for the first time and if i go back and come back to the same page again the the cache will be served as a data okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to implement this with a time based one so for this we need a timer service and the timer service is going to track down the moment we started saving something in the cache and then it will look for a set of time and if it is elapsed it's going to reset the time and it's going to invalidate the entire cache okay that is what i'm going to do so i will go to the service and create a timer service I, it's a new file called timer service so once the timer service is created i will copy paste some code and explain you what is that if you look at this it's a very simple customized logic so we have a uh, couple of private properties and public properties just to measure the timings so what this is doing is it is going to track down the time difference of the started time and the current time okay and uh, there are helper methods like start timer reset timer and all those things so those methods are used from the http interceptor to invoke a particular timing and then to monitor the timing so we added the timer service if you look at the start timer method uh, i'm trying to find out the particular interval that has been coming from the environment file so this is just to keep the hard coding not to hard code right so i have kept this environment content as 30 minutes but for time being for demo purpose i'll change it to one minute so what this is doing is it will it will initiate the timer based on how many minutes you wanted to have this cache to be implemented okay so the other methods are also the helper methods now let's get to the uh, http cache interceptor and in the interceptor what i will do is i will inject the timer service and then a small piece of logic i will put here basically that logic is to initiate the timer so whenever the first http call is initiated the timer is initiated once the timer is initiated it will keep looking for that every single time a uh, outgoing call is triggered so let's say the first call is triggered now second call is triggered in five minutes so which is less than that 30 minutes right or one minute so it will not reset the timing it will not reset the uh, cache however once a particular third call or n number of call has gone after 30 minutes after an inactive session right the timer that we have set has already elapsed so it's going to reset the timer and it will call the method invalidate the cache method from the cache service and it will wipe off everything so you will see that in the demo now back to the demo so we implemented the timer service and uh, for time purpose I have made the timing as one minute okay so now I triggered a couple of calls you can see I'm hovering on the cosines and calls are getting triggered and everything is recorded 
right all good so cache is working now i'm going to pause this video for a minute or so so that the time is getting elapsed and i can show you how this works so now you can see all the data is being served from the cache that's what the console says right so now because it's more than one minute it's it's going to invalidate the cache due to the cache time limit that's what we saw on the console so which worked properly and then every single time a new call goes it's all recorded and after that if you hover it's not recording right it's it's serving from the cache so now you can change this one minute to 30 minutes or 45 minutes according to your need but this is as simple as that i will give you the description of this and a complete source code in my blog you can check out the description below and uh, if you have any comments or questions add it in the comments and i'll reply to you i hope you enjoyed it thank you so this is my blog and i have explained everything in this post you can go and check this blog and also you can copy the entire code from this blog you have every single step explained properly to implement this cache in your angular application thanks for watching if you like my video don't forget to subscribe my channel like it share it comment it and never forget to click on the bell icon